I'm Kelsey, the Naptime Chef. Well, my daughter is sound asleep for a late summer afternoon nap. We've been out all morning having a blast. I can't believe that she starts school next week. So while she's napping today, what we're going to do is have some fun and make some great cookies. I'm going to make the cookie dough now and then bake the cookies after she goes to bed. I just found this recipe in the most recent issue of Bon Appetit and I can't wait to try it. It's for blueberries and cream cookies. But instead of blueberries, I'm going to use dried cherries. I think they'll taste delicious anyway. So, let's get started. The first step in making these cookies is to make the milk crumbs. These are the spruce-like crumbs that are made of non-fat dry milk, butter, flour, and sugar. They smell delicious when they're made, and they're very easy to make. You can make them up to one week ahead of time if you want before you make these cookies. Add all the dry ingredients to a mixing bowl, then top it with melted butter, and stir with a wooden spoon until a streusel-like crumbs form. Before you start making the crumbs, preheat the oven and line a large baking sheet with parchment paper. This way, when the crumbs are ready, you can slip them right in the oven and get started with the wet ingredients for the cookies. While the crumbs are baking, start with the wet ingredients. This recipe calls for a lot of butter and a lot of flour, so it's a good idea to use the largest mixing bowl you have available. Combine the butter, sugars, and corn syrup in your mixing bowl, and then mix it for a full 10 minutes. This seems like a long time, but it'll make the batter very smooth and a little bit sticky. This is exactly what you want to get the texture that you want in your baked cookies. In the time I got the wet ingredients mixing, my crumbs were done, so I set them aside to cool off a little bit. They were toasty and warm, but not browned. This is exactly how you want them to be. Stop the mixer once to scrape down the sides while it's mixing, then continue to let it mix. And while it's doing so, combine your dry ingredients in a separate large mixing bowl. Like I said, this recipe calls for a lot of flour, so make sure you have a very big bag on hand before you get started. Then combine all of the dry ingredients in a large mixing bowl and get ready to add them to the wet ingredients once it's done mixing. The original recipe called for dried blueberries, but I had to use dried cherries because that's what I had on hand. Either would be delicious. Once the wet ingredients have mixed for a full 10 minutes, add the dry ingredients slowly. Be sure to scrape down the sides a couple of times to make sure that everything is incorporated. Just mix the dry ingredients until they are just incorporated. You don't want to overbeat the batter. Then, chill it for the afternoon, wrap tightly in plastic in your refrigerator. You can even freeze half if you only want to use half the dough for baking and save half for later. With the dough chilling for the afternoon, I had the rest of the day to spend with my daughter after she woke up from her nap. We set up a 10 cent matchbox car wash. If you need a wash, come on by. After she was asleep for the evening, I set about to bake my cookies. Evening is one of my favorite times to bake. It's so peaceful and there's no one else in the kitchen to get in your way. I preheated the oven, cleaned up the toys, and set about baking the cookies. I use my trusty ice cream scoop to get the dough onto the cookie sheet, and I place each scoop two inches apart. Then I bake them for 18 minutes. I rotated sheet after sheet until all the cookies were made, and while I was doing this, I caught up on Mad Men on the DVR in the living room. It was a really fun, easy way to bake cookies, and we had delicious cookies for the rest of the week. I'm Kelsey, the Naptime Chef. Thanks for watching. I look forward to cooking with you again soon.